Leak code is really hard. If you're trying to be a software engineer, you might have had friends or classmates tell you to check out this website and solve as many problems as you can. You might try the first problem or the easiest problem that you see and realize that solving this problem was a little bit harder than you thought, even if it was marked as easy. That might hurt your confidence and it might really demotivate you from trying harder. If you're anything like me, you might feel like you're struggling a lot doing this. For the past four years, I worked at a lot of different tech companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. But before that, I wasn't even able to land a single internship and I had to figure out how to do Lee code on my own. I'm going to share a lot of the tips that worked for me along with some of my favorite books on learning, including Mind for Numbers, Flow, and Make It Stick. By the end of the video, I promise you'll walk away with a better mindset trying to solve these problems because I think sometimes we're a little too hard on ourselves. You'll also learn how to prioritize which problems you should be solving because there's a lot of information out there, but it's really hard to figure out which problems are the right problems to solve. You'll also have a system that will solve lead code problems and prepare you for any coding interviews. Because at the end of the day, we're doing this to become a software engineer and to prepare for those coding interviews, not to solve as many problems as we can. Tip number one. Move on to the next problem in 30 minutes. Most people are actually trying way too hard if they're spending hours or days on the same problem. If you're spending more than 30 minutes on a problem, you'll start becoming less efficient with your time. And it might be hard to notice at first, but a lot of the time that you're spending on that same problem could be used to solve other problems where you could be learning a lot more. Interviewers don't care how many problems you solve. They just want to know if you know the material and if you can communicate that well. To help you with that, here's my second tip. Before any coding or anything else, you have to write things down. Write down your algorithm that you're going to be using to solve your problem. You don't have to write things down with pen or paper. You can actually write things down in the IDE or your code editor itself. Just use a few comments, write down how you're going to use your algorithm to solve the problem, and then follow through on it. This helps a lot because when you're going through coding interviews, you can actually show the interviewer what your thought process is. If you ever get stuck along the way doing your coding problem, you can actually leave a comment or a to-do to come back to it later. I've seen way too many interviews where people would actually just be stuck on an issue the entire interview and just wouldn't be able to move on. That's not what they're testing you on. They really just want to see how well you communicate and how well you can actually follow through on what you outlined. Tip number three. Focus on these two lists, the blind 75, and the Neatcode 150. A lot of these problems are curated already to figure out what the best patterns and algorithms are for you to solve any coding interview. To add a few more thoughts, most coding interview questions tend to be related to either string, array, or hash map questions. So I would actually just focus on a lot of those first before digging into the more advanced data structure and algorithm topics. When using that list, definitely build a little bit more on what you already know. If you're solving problems that are too easy, you're going to feel really bored solving those problems. If you're solving problems that are a little too hard, you'll feel really stressed and demotivated. So what you definitely want to do is find that in-between flow that's going to help you solve problems that are still challenging, yet they're still kind of fun to solve. My fourth tip is to focus on patterns, not problems. If you've ever seen how many leak code questions there are, there's more than 3,000 questions. And I can promise you, I've never met anyone who's actually solved all 3,000 problems. I definitely want to think about this with a math example. If you're trying to multiply 25 and 17 together, you could memorize the answer. Or you could actually try to understand how multiplication works. If you do that, you'll be able to multiply any two numbers together. So if you understand the underlying patterns, you'll definitely be a lot more successful solving leak code problems over memorizing them. So my fifth tip really comes from personal experience, and that's to not solve every problem. When you're familiar with enough patterns, you'll start to build an intuition on how to solve a lot of these problems that you don't actually have to keep solving the same problems or learning things you already know. If you can look at a problem and spend five minutes on it and figure out a really good solution for it, you understand that problem so well that you don't even have to code it. Of course, you have to be honest with yourself if you can actually code this problem, but if you can do it, just move on and solve another problem that you're a little bit more unfamiliar with. The last thing I want you to walk away with is to accept that this is where you are in your journey, that to accept where you are and that you will figure it out. 
If you're not there yet, you will get there. If you don't know data structures and algorithms, you can learn data structures and algorithms. It is a skill and skills can be learned. You just need some time and effort to get into it. It took me six months before I started to feel a little comfortable with any coding question. It took me a little bit more than a year before I could even feel confident being in front of an interviewer. It takes time and it takes practice and you definitely get there if you keep practicing enough. Every journey begins with a single step and you'll get there as long as you keep going. And if you want to see more software engineering tips, definitely subscribe. It really helps the channel.